Hey everyone, my name is Colt Steele. I'm a web development instructor and one of the creators of Springboard's software engineering career track, a program that takes you from pretty much no programming experience up to getting a software engineering job. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the three main options you have for becoming a software engineer. If you have no experience now, you can teach yourself, you can enroll in a paid program like Springboard, or you can go to college and get a degree. Springboard's 100% online, self-paced structure means you don't have to put your life online to change careers. You can learn at home when you want, you'll work one-on-one -on -one with your own mentor, you'll build out a huge portfolio of projects, you'll practice coding interviews, and then eventually get a job. So let's dive a little deeper into the different approaches you have um, to teach yourself or to learn programming uh, to eventually become a software engineer. The first most obvious choice is to teach yourself, to go 100% self-taught using free resources, online tutorials, books, uh, courses on platforms like Udemy. It's definitely doable to land your first software engineering role only using these self-taught resources. But of course, teaching yourself to program um, is not always the easiest. This isn't something you learn in a matter of days or weeks, we're talking months here. So for a lot of people, it's hard to stay on top of that, to truly treat it as their job or, or a job. And if you are seriously considering teaching yourself to program, if you're doing it at home, if you are entirely self-taught, it could take a, a year, maybe a year and a half. It really depends on how much time you're setting aside for yourself every day. So let's talk more about the specific pros and cons of teaching yourself to code. And when I say teaching yourself to code, I mean getting a job, doing the whole curriculum from start to finish, not just teaching yourself the basics, but really becoming a software engineer. The first pro, of course, is that it's free or very cheap. You might buy some, some courses, some Udemy courses. We're talking tens of dollars or maybe hundreds of dollars tops you can get a full curriculum even just on YouTube. The biggest con is that it's completely unstructured and you're on your own. So if you're the type of person who can really stay on top of it, who could build out a curriculum, who can follow that curriculum um, and do all the projects, build a portfolio. There are many people who can do that, to be clear. It's not some absurd concept, but there are a lot of people, including myself, who would struggle to do that. So that's the biggest con, is that you are just entirely on your own. You can build a community, you can find uh, subreddits out there, there's Discord servers, uh, Facebook groups of people who are learning together to add a little bit of structure, but uh, that is probably the biggest drawback. Another pro would be the, the time, the structure. You can self-teach yourself whenever you have time. That could be full time, every day, treat it like a job. That could be after work, in the evenings, that could be on weekends. So you have flexibility there. Now for some other cons, um, aside from not having anyone to keep you accountable, it can be harder to find help. It can be harder to immediately find an answer. If you get stuck on something, and in a classroom environment, in a college environment, you could raise your hand, you could talk to your neighbor. Well, if you're at home teaching yourself totally alone and isolated, you're gonna have to figure it out or maybe you'll post something on Reddit or on Stack Overflow and you'll get an answer eventually, but things can be a bit slower. That can build resilience, which is definitely a good quality in a developer, uh, but it can be frustrating when you're trying to teach yourself. So a question a lot of people have is, can I actually get a job as a self-taught engineer? Can I teach myself everything and get my first job and start my career? The answer is definitely yes, you can. Um, it's hard. It just requires an incredible amount of drive and discipline and structure, but also you have to have something to show for yourself. You have to have a portfolio. You have to have projects. People need to recognize that you actually know what you're talking about, that you can do the, the things you claim you can do on your resume. So you definitely can get a job. You'll you just kind of have to prove yourself a little bit more than somebody who had gone through a traditional program or even a boot camp program where there's a, at least some level of credibility um, just given to you by the fact that you graduated a program and you have something to show for it. I've worked with a lot of developers who were self-taught um, and they tend to be very strong, but you don't see the thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, people who start out on the self-taught uh, pathway who end up giving in or giving up entirely. So I'm not trying to scare anyone away from trying to self-teach. 
it is definitely doable. It just really requires you to have a pretty solid expectation set up front. This is a hard thing to do. If it was something you could watch a couple videos on and learn, I wouldn't have a job. There would be a lot of people out of a job. So if you do want to self teach, uh, don't be discouraged by that. Just have those expectations set and be ready to do some hard work, set a structure for yourself and really follow through, hold yourself accountable and make sure that you are doing everything you possibly can to stay on track. So at Springboard, the timeline can vary quite a bit because, well, it depends on how much time you dedicate to learning each week. Um, but generally, at a minimum, we're looking at around 20 to 25 hours a week. It will take you about nine months to finish the course and then get a job after that. So in terms of the pros and cons compared to self-studying, attending a, pro a program like Springboard or any of our competitors uh, is expensive, right? You have some money involved, although it really depends because the next pro is that uh, Springboard is job guaranteed. So when you attend a program like Springboard, you're guaranteed that job, you get your money back. Uh, so the chances of you actually getting a job are way higher than you self-studying on your own. So if you're somebody who is serious about changing careers, you're not just exploring the idea, but you definitely want to do it. You definitely want to get a new job, hopefully make more money, and you want some flexibility, but you still want the accountability, you want the, uh, the mentorship, um, the ability to ask questions and get answers quickly. If you want all of that, then a program like Springboard could definitely be a pretty solid fit, but also, not to just chill for Springboard here, there's uh, other models for boot camps where it is not self-paced. If you really thrive in a classroom environment where you are live with a teacher and other students, that is definitely an option as well. But at the end of the day, I would argue both of them have a much greater success rate than just teaching yourself alone at home, you know, doing self-study. So that brings us to the final option, or the third option, if you want to learn to code, you could attend college. You could go to a four-year program or maybe a master's program. So I think it's pretty obvious how this differs compared to self-study versus uh, you know, a three to nine month program uh, by attending a boot camp. Going to college is, what, at a minimum two years, up to four years of really serious learning uh, with multiple courses, a, a heavy workload, and a lot of additional stuff that comes along with college. If you want to go to college, if that is an option you have at your disposal, you have the money, you have the time, the flexibility, you don't have a job, you don't have a family, whatever it is, then it's obviously a great route. There's many reasons to attend a, a university program and get a, a degree in computer science. But it's almost overkill. If you just want to get a job quickly, if you want to become a software engineer and get that first job, you don't need to spend four years. Will it be worth those four years? Most likely, right? You, you definitely have a higher, uh, I would say a higher ceiling out of college than you would out of a boot camp program. But it comes at that cost of tens of thousands of dollars or even hundreds of thousands, depending on the college or university and the time, the four years. But I'm in no way anti-college. I'm not advocating that you don't attend. Uh, it's just really depends on your, your life and what works for you. Now, as far as curriculum and academics covered at a, a traditional four-year computer science program compared to a boot camp, there's a world of difference. There's four years of difference, uh, but it's not even the same material necessarily that's covered. Now there's another category of person who may be watching this, which is somebody who already has tech, the, the technical skills necessary to get a job, but don't have a job or doesn't have a job yet. Uh, and for those people, um, you could attend a bootcamp program, but there are other programs out there that are solely focused on career stuff, on outcomes and helping you get a job. And the reason these programs exist is that a lot of other boot camps don't actually have job guarantees and they just have a ton of students go through, they don't get jobs, and then they actually will go pay 
the students will go pay other programs to help them land a job. Uh, that is not the case at Springboard, but if you are somebody who has those skills, if you, if you know how to build things, if you have a portfolio, but you just don't have a job, you definitely can apply and get some help from these placement programs, these outcomes-oriented programs. They take a couple weeks, sometimes a month or two, and they'll help you land a job. So we covered a lot around the different ways of breaking into software engineering, whether you do it self-study the whole way, or by attending a bootcamp program like Springboard, or by going to a traditional college or university and getting a degree. By now, maybe you have an idea of what would fit best with your life, your schedule, your finances, your career, um, and I hope you learned something. So my name is Colt Steele, and thanks again for watching.